Everyone, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to Tech Tuesday. My reflection today, I'm entitling, Techno Immortality is Truly Pathetic. Techno Immortality is Truly Pathetic. I would like to talk to you a little bit about some of the religious quests of uh, the tech titans. The tech titans are those incredible uh, Silicon Valley billionaires who are behind the rise of uh, our great tech companies. You'll know most of their names. I'd like to focus upon one of them uh, today. Uh, but first, before I do that, I'd like to raise a concern to you. If you haven't read any of the biographies of these tech titans or done any uh, semi-deep dives into kind of their fundamental convictions, these people who are creating platforms that are now governing the earth and having a tremendous impact uh, in all aspects of life. I'm speaking, of course, from the United States, where that is absolutely fundamental. And you see that by the controversies that surround the role of things like Facebook and Instagram. And since Elon Musk bought Twitter, Twitter particularly, with regards to everything from uh, covid uh, propagation of COVID information to elections and who is the president of the United States. <laughs> anyway, the tech titans have their hands in the most intimate details of our lives, our everyday lives. And it's important to know what their vision is and what they're really about. One thing that they have in common is that they universally reject traditional religion. 100% universally reject traditional religion. That doesn't mean they all share the same positive convictions, but their negative convictions, the fact that they all have grown up fundamentally anti-religious and are creating worldviews completely based upon extremely uh, thin uh, and bogus foundations, spiritually speaking, uh, should greatly concern you for sure. They have created a world uh, where they have their, their cyber fingers in all details of a person's life, uh, but they at the same time lack religious vision. They are like fish uh, flopping out of water uh, as they try to explain what their ultimate goals are with their technologies and their vision for life. And these are extremely intelligent people, but they have harnessed their intelligence exclusively in the realm of the physical, of the created, uh, of the biological, so to speak. This is where they look for their answers to the most important questions. And of course, just right off the bat, that is a completely novel, post-secular, post-Christian concept to undergird undergird a scientific quest and always comes up empty since science simply cannot address the great issues of the human mind and soul. Science can't answer why or provide uh, that kind of motivation. And so what we end up getting when you have masters of tech like we do who reject on principle the whole realm of traditional religion, what you end up getting are the uh, affirmations of incredibly, incredibly intelligent, stupid people. That's what you end up getting. I'd like to use as an example today, uh, one of the most influential tech titans uh, of the late 20th and early 21st century, a man named Martin Rothblatt, who is now Martine Rothblatt. He is a trans woman. Uh, he is an absolutely brilliant person, uh, extremely influential in the small Silicon Valley world of tech titans, very well connected, made a lot of his or her uh, initial uh, millions in the creation of satellite radio like Sirius XM, uh, was a major contributor to the creator of geotechnology, a geolocation technology, a visionary person who when confronted with a crisis, uh, he and uh, his wife, Bina, had a daughter and she was diagnosed with a very serious disease that wasn't well treated and the, the 
prognosis was not good. And so he has given in himself to uh, dealing with matters, uh, focusing all of his creative energies on trying to address the, the sorrow of uh, human disease. He created a company uh, called United Therapeutics, and he has been the CEO of this company. This company has uh, very large ambitions. Uh, she has, he had become the highest paid female CEO uh, in the United States, extremely uh, focused and dedicated person. This uh, company, United Therapeutics, has, uh, as I mentioned, a broad range of ambitions, including uh, the development of biotechnology to assist in organ transplant. Uh, this is because over... Uh, in, in the broad spectrum of organ transplants, about 50% of organs end up being rejected because the process is so involved that the integrity of the organs is lost uh, in the process. So uh, Martine is working very hard to <coughs> create uh, a smoother transition from the acquisition of the organs to the transplant, including developing electric, uh, non-personally piloted helicopters automated helicopters that will transport uh, quickly the organs uh, so that the time to transport organs is greatly reduced and the success of transplant goes up. Uh, United Therapeutics is also trying to create um, effective pig to human organ transplant processes. Uh, United Therapeutics is also trying to actually create with 3D printing human organs uh, from scratch so that um, we can have an abundant supply of new uh, and healthy organs to use in all organ transplants. Not small ambitions, as you can see, coming from a very intelligent and a visionary person. Um, Martin has also created uh, a nonprofit. It's essentially a new religion. Uh, that's not the preferred language, but that's exactly what it is. She's created here, he has created what's called the Terrasem movement. Um, Martine is extremely influential in the whole transhumanist project and is trying to find a way uh, in which uh, the greater quest for uh, human, of human ambition, which isn't just physical life, uh, can uh, express itself. Of course, her ambitions in doing this uh, are all contained and bound by her extremely vi limited religious vision, which is an atheistic, materialist vision of reality. And that presupposition, uh, that foundation of rejection of the belief in God and the human soul, leads her to define eternal life and consciousness uh, in purely materialist terms. Uh, which is, of course, extremely grievous. And I don't know if Martin recognizes the incredible um, inconsistency. He, he is so driven to find a, a, an answer to what is essentially a religious quest while denying traditional religion. So he wants to preserve at any cost life, but he can't really explain why. He flat out said, I don't think human beings are ordained to die. But of course, in his own religious worldview, he can't defend that. Why? Why? And everyone does die. If you're just observing science, then if there's any law that should be very clear to you, Mr. Rothblatt, it's that human beings are meant to die because that's what everyone does. The fact that in you, you reject that is evidence that you have a soul and that you know in your own deep consciousness that human beings were not created to die, but that we die because of sin by our own choice. And it's unfortunate and it's awful, and it's an uh, enemy, the last enemy in St. Paul's language. But of course, uh, he or she hasn't come to that uh, articulation yet. I, I hope so. Martine is constrained by her own presuppositions and her own worldview. She can't understand why she so desperately doesn't want to lose her daughter to death. Why it's so important to live. Uh, why the idea that her wife, Martin's wife, Bina, he, who, they've been married for many, many, many years, decades, I think between 35 and 40 years, he does not want to lose her. And so he has been 
uh, trying to find a way that he can preserve and keep Bina alive. And what the Teresa movement to do, is doing, together with uh, her other scientific ambitions uh, in the United Therapeutics movement, is to try to create what um, Martin calls cyber immortality. This is uh, the digital eternal life that, or, or techno immortality, as I'm calling it uh, in the title of this reflection. This quest for techno immortality is what uh, the Teresa movement is all about. Martin thinks that if you just collect, uh, digitally collect all of a person's thoughts and words, first of all, you, of course, you can't collect everyone's thoughts. <laughs> All you can collect are, are the thoughts that they articulate. But, sh but he thinks that if all of these are collected, they can be uploaded. And in that sense, you are uploaded. You are these um, recordable thoughts. And that is your consciousness. And it can be uploaded. And therefore, you can be preserved somehow on a disk or on a computer. Martin is absolutely serious about this. I mean, I know most normal people, most people who haven't worked so hard to suppress their innate religious sense and what's written on their heart would just say that's so, so ridiculous. I mean, that, that, that is not eternal life. That is such a shallow, very limited preservation of an external aspect of a human being. And that in no way can be called immortality. But that is not how Martin sees it. That is not how the tech titans who support, and many of them do, this uh, transhumanist project perceive uh, eternal life or human consciousness. And so what they want to do is they're focused on this preservation of quote-unquote digital consciousness together with cryogenics, the idea that your DNA can be preserved. This is the idea. We're going to be able to extend human life indefinitely by recording your consciousness, your thoughts, digitally by computers, and then they'll even blast them. This is serious. They'll even blast them out into space together with your DNA and your digital record so that some advanced society that will survive the global catastrophe, which they think is probably coming, they may be correct about that, through some sort of nuclear nightmare, um, somehow, some f in the future, some other <laughs> advanced civilization will find your DNA and your record of your thoughts, your digital consciousness, and somehow refab, create a body for you, and you'll be able to live. <laughs> you know, could you make this stuff up? Really, could you make this stuff up? Well, evidently you can, because uh, Martin has. And this isn't some just, uh, you know, side uh, quack project. I mean, this person is one of the most influential scientists in the United States an extremely wealthy tech titan in the inner circle of tech titans who are making policy and are trying to drive our civilization. How does that make you feel? I didn't think it made you feel very well. Martine has mentioned that she's seen that animals have some form of consciousness. And so that must mean that, uh, you know, that consciousness isn't just, you know, the domain of human beings and that you can create different types. Of course, you know, religious people understand, Christian people understand that there are souls in animals. Uh, they aren't human souls. They aren't immortal souls made in the, more, in the image of God, but they are souls. And that the soul is not measurable scientifically. The soul is not material. What uh, Teresem and Martin Rothbard are basically doing are continuing the original sin of mankind. They are playing God, trying to create some sort of conscious machines. Martin has created a robot that looks exactly, or almost as much as a robot can, like his wife, Bina. He calls it Bina 48. He has been for years recording everything that his wife says and uploading it to this robot, practicing interaction with this robot with the idea that somehow after his wife dies, which she most certainly will, um, he'll still be able to have Bina with him. Is it not heart-wrenching? 
uh, to see a husband who loves his wife doing such a thing. That's his hope. Uh, and he's hoping, of course, against hope. Being a 48, the artificial intelligence replica is nothing more than a robot. No matter how many recordings are uploaded to this robot, this is not his wife. And the terror that he has of losing her, like the terror that he had of losing his daughter, uh, is driving him to um, incredible feats of uh, illogical nonsense and great grief. Paint her as close to your wife as you can. It's not going to be Bina. How do you live in this world created by the atheists uh, and still live with your internal spiritual desires? This is the great question that uh, these tech titans are having such a hard time answering. For Martine and her club of exceedingly intellectual stupid people, Eternal life is the continuation of biological on the earth, li bi biological life on the earth. Maybe just your continuation of your digital platform and your DNA in some tube somewhere. This is you. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, it's something completely different. He says, this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. If you want eternal life, you have to know God. God is life. And to be connected by God to God by faith, to know him by faith, is to be receiving eternal life. To interact with his son who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And to allow uh, uh, and facilitate by your trust in him a union of your own person with him. This is the answer to every human quest. And the salvation which... The Lord Jesus Christ brings to men and women is a salvation that will satisfy every human quest to avoid death. He came to destroy death and all the works of the devil so that we might share in his resurrection and his life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he die. This is the definition of life and our biological exhaustion, together with the exhaustion of our soul, find rest and rejuvenation in a union with Christ. To try to become God without God is what Adam and Eve did, and it ought not continue to be repeated. It will end poorly. I want to end with a word from St. Paul as an encouragement. It's found in his epistle to the Ephesians in chapter 5, where he says this, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. God be with you.